Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, April 16th. The Upper Room Reflection is based on the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. <clears throat> and our prayer focus today are grandparents and grandchildren. The Reflection in the Upper Room, uh, written by Ellie Morowitz from Florida in the United States of America, is about uh, her relationship with her granddaughter. And the Gospel, um, reading, chapter 28. Uh, I was just thinking about my relationship with my grandmother, who is dead now, has been for many years. Um, yeah, both my grandmothers, um, both of those relationships are have had lasting impacts on me. One, one of my grandmothers was white, one of my grandmothers was black, yeah. and uh, black indigenous, Garefuna. And uh, they have uh, affected me and my growing up years in profound ways. And I am glad for both of them, my grandmother's wisdom uh, <clears throat> and their resilience and perseverance. Uh, through great traumas in their lives, very different lives they lived, and in some ways, uh, similar struggles. But the gospel, uh, Matthew 28, I'm starting with verse 16. Matthew's version uh, of the end of Jesus' ministry before Pentecost is a little different than uh, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, and uh, Matthew has Jesus telling them to meet him on the mountain in Galilee, uh, the mountain where Jesus told them to go, right? Um, and uh, I, uh, there are lots of theories about, of course, what that mountain was, uh, where in Galilee they met. Um, and it's, uh, it's fascinating to me, verse 17, it says, uh, well, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, verse 16, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Verse 17, when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Some doubted. Even here, he's risen from the dead. They, all The 11 of them are together, and they're still doubting. We don't know what exactly fueled their doubts, uh, but... They doubted and believed, and that gives me great comfort because faith isn't the same thing as certainty. Um, the assurance, we're told faith is the substance of things hoped for, the assurance right, of things that we can't see, right? We have this sense of, 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 uh, of, of uh, uh, the sense of promise, and that gives us, that fuels our faith. Faith allows us to uh, believe before we actually see things with our very with our physical eyes, right? About what we're believing, right? Like the resurrection of all of us, or Christ coming again, or answers to prayers, right? We we go to God with this assurance that God is good and hears our prayers. That's faith. That's that's that um, confidence we have in God, right? It's faith in God's goodness, God's character that draws us to God, right? And we can have doubts at the same time we have faith because faith is not certainty. People whip themselves up into a false sense of certainty about what they're believing, what they're hoping for. And we have once again in the scriptures, the example of the apostles, the 11 disciples seeing the risen Christ appear to them and still doubting doubting themselves, doubting how this is going to happen, doubting if they're actually experiencing this, doubting if they understand Jesus, doubting if Jesus is, you know, the, all the things that you can doubt, they're, they're there. So I, that's great reassurance for me because I think certainty is a trap. Certainty is presumptive. I have faith 
And that's very different from certainty. I have, and I pray that my faith grows stronger, grows truer, grows deeper, that my, my relationship with God, uh, as God reveals God's faithfulness to me, that strengthens my faith in God and my uh, hope in God, right? God's promises uh, for, for the world, for me, for the next generations, for healing, for peace, for justice, for goodness, for the evil to be resisted and destroyed, for people to rise up in the spirit of Christ and in the love of God, right? And, and do good for the world. And um, right, I have hope that those things are worth fighting for and fight, worth living for and worth dying for. My faith and hope in God's love and, and that uh, undying love and my faith that what Jesus promises is true and the scriptures go on to say, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all peoples, of all nationalities, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of time, to the end of the ages. Right? And that's the promise we have that gives me so much hope and so much joy that Christ is with us. The risen Christ is with his people, his church, his disciples, in this work that we do in his name, in the name of this triune God, this one Trinitarian this God that has revealed God's self to us in Christ and in the teachings and called us to be his body, his church. This God who is genderless and encompasses all genders. This God who is spirit and not mortal, immortal, eternal, uh, timeless, and steps into time and incarnates in Mary and Jesus and is born and grows up as a man and crucified, died and risen from the dead. It gives us the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God of, that lives in us and promises to raise us also. Uh, this, this glorious God, who's more than our language can contain or describe, more than our tiny brains can understand, comprehend this God, that Jesus taught us about and shows us in his life and in his in the incarnation and the and the teachings and the death and the resurrection and the and in Pentecost, all of it, this God is with us always to the end of time. And we know from the scriptures revelation that there are many names for this God. The the uh, the the revelation that is in capture, that is captured in the unique wording of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit encompasses all of that and is meant to convey what is, what is uh, incomprehensible and beyond human speech about the Holy One who inhabits eternity and dwells in the human heart, in the contrite soul. Right, as Isaiah says, the high and lofty one who loves us. That God is with us to the end of time. The Upper Room Reflection today is called The Granddaughter's Gift. We pray for grandparents and their grandchildren, for the gift of and faith and hope and love that many, many know in their relationship with uh, their grandparents or their grandparents to grandchildren. And it's hard sometimes to honor that relationship because your own children are the parents of your grandchildren. 
whether they're adopted or biologically uh, uh, part of your, your family tree, and you want to work together and honor the parent's relationship at the same time to live into what it means to be the grandparents, to, um, you know, sometimes uh, uh, grandparents, you know, have to assume the good cop role and the parents are the bad cops uh, with the little uh, uh, children who are sometimes incorrigible. <laughs> um, but need to be, you know, disciplined and brought up in uh, understanding, you know, all the family things, right, and uh, what it means to mature and be responsible, right? But uh, some grandparents' and grandchildren's relationships are very different, especially if the parents are not active in the children's lives, if they're dead or incarcerated or incapacitated through other kinds of illness, Grandparents step in and play a double role to honor the parents and to parent their grandchildren, right? And we all have strengths and weaknesses when it comes to relationships with our with children, and children have special and different relationships with their parents and their grandparents. And um, so God bless all those uh, nuances and complexities and help our love to grow and and us to honor the seeds that our children are being and the faith that we and the love that we plant in them in both generations of parents and grandparents. I am grateful for both my grandmothers and my grandfathers, uh, even though they have very different influences in my life. Um, and come from very different parts of the world. And their legacy and their the quality of my relationship with them uh, has impacted me, my entire childhood, and my entire adult life. And uh, my ancestors are here with me, and future generations that I will never meet uh, depend on me being faithful to the life and the love God has called me to. I like that also in the Native American traditions, many of them refer to uh, the Great Spirit as grandfather, grandmother, and uh, in this sense of, uh, of age and wisdom, the ancient of days, the Hebrew scriptures call God. And um, this idea of, of, of grandparents having great wisdom to pass on to the next generations, not just their children, but their grandchildren as well. And, uh, you know, it's also been said that um, God doesn't have grandchildren uh, coming from European Christian traditions, right? You, that um, you have to have a direct relationship. All of us are children of God, right? We are we're made in the image of God in that sense that God is our source for everyone, right? There's nothing between us and the image of God in us. No, no middle generation of deities, if you will. And that we're, our faith isn't grandfathered in, to use that word in another way to explain that, saying that God doesn't have grandchildren, only children. That you can't, you can't get into heaven based on someone else's faith kind of thing. That uh, you don't get a grandfathered in just because you've been, you show up. <laughs> you kind of have to have the fruit that matches the tree that Jesus says we're to abide in him and show. Well, Ellie Morowitz from Florida in the United States of America writes our upper room reflection today. God bless grandparents and grandchildren, and God bless Ellie for this reflection. My granddaughter surprised me with a surprise Christmas present, an embroidered picture titled, I am with you always, Matthew 28, 20. That is the very last verse of Matthew's gospel. It'd be good to memorize that. The very last word in Matthew's gospel, Jesus said, I am with you always to the end of the age. My granddaughter didn't realize the significance that Bible verse has held for me many years before. 
When I came to the United States 66 years ago, I spoke limited English. I joined a youth group at my church, led by a young student minister. He soon noticed I was quite withdrawn. But after a few kind words from him, I opened up and told him I was worried about my grades in school and that I had difficulty keeping up with my classes. He then quoted Matthew 28, verse 20. He told me that Jesus was talking to me personally and that Jesus was always with me in every situation. I suddenly felt uplifted and my faith soared. From that day on, I smiled more and opened up to friends at school. When I prepared for a test or a project, I knew I did not have to do it alone. Jesus would be with me. After reflecting on these memories, I called my granddaughter and told her about the impact her embroidered Christmas gift verse had on my life many years ago when I was a child. More importantly, I was able to share with her the difference that Jesus promise makes in my life to this day. That is a wonderful gift that kept on giving. The granddaughter gives her a scripture verse embroidered by the granddaughter, sounds like. And then the grandmother gets to share her faith and they together get to uh, uh, grow in their faith in Christ in the sharing of that love and that gift. The thought for us today is how do my words and actions reflect my trust in God? How indeed, and how do we share our faith with our grandchildren? They're surprisingly open to listen to older people, especially their grandparents. I uh, am, Delighted that uh, so many grandparents bring their grandchildren to church. Often the parents are so busy, so tired, don't understand the significance of faith. But when you're a grandparent, you do. When you look back over your whole life, it makes sense. You know what to treasure. You know what to treasure. So we pray. Dear Father, Thank you for your gift of Jesus. Show us opportunities to minister to our friends and family and to tell them of your special gift of love and grace. Amen. Now, as families, as grandparents and grandchildren, let's ask each other about our faith. Let's share it. Let's grow together. It's okay to have doubts. Let's work on strengthening our trust in God today. I'm glad you're with me on the journey.